Hi, this is Bruce Bishop for ChronicleT.com. We are back here at Corks and Stubbies for week number five. I'm with Tim Alcorn from AM 930 WEOL. Tim, big week last week. Huge week last week. Uh, you know, it was a year ago about this time that uh, we did one of these recordings, Bruce, and I mentioned then uh, it's always special to do a recording the week after a record-breaking performance. Well, a year ago, it was because uh, I had the privilege and the pleasure of calling DeMario McCall's uh, single-game rushing record in Lorain County when he went absolutely crazy against Elyria Catholic. Well, here we are uh, a year later, and I get to say the same thing. Uh, it's a real privilege and a pleasure to call a record-breaking performance in the county. And last Friday night, uh, I don't know how much more you can say about Dustin Crum and what he did against Avon. A county record eight touchdown passes. Uh, just a phenomenal performance by Dustin Crum. And six of those touchdown passes went to Logan Bolin. He had an incredible night of his own, the great wide receiver for Midview. And uh, that six touchdown receptions in a game uh, ties the state record. So they were an unbelievable combination last night, for, or excuse me, last week for the Midview Middies. And so they go to 4-0 and on the year, uh, now only one of two teams in Lorain County. That's perfect so far. But boy, they've got a huge, huge game this week, taking on another 4-0 team in Berea Mid Park. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it certainly was special, unless you're an Avon fan, of course, to uh, watch a performance like we saw last night. I keep saying last night, last week with uh, Dustin Crum and one Logan Bolin. They were very, very special. Yes, he, uh, Firelands got themselves a record too, didn't they? Yeah, it was a, a record-setting performance for the Falcons. Uh, they set the school record for total offensive yards in a game. Uh, they went 502 against the Clearview Clippers, uh, and 490 of those came on the ground. Uh, they only threw the ball for uh, 12 yards, but hey, when the ground game's working, why not stick with it? And so that's what Firelands did last week. Uh, they are now 3-1 and one on the year, and their three straight wins are all shutout wins. So you talk about 500 yards in total offense in a game, and yet here's the Firelands defense. Uh, they have shut out three straight opponents, so uh, they've got it rolling on both sides of the ball right now. The Falcons are playing very, very well. So uh, these two teams, what are they or that we're talking about with records? Uh, what are they facing this weekend? I know Midview has a huge game, right? Yeah, Midview's got that big ball game. We alluded to it uh, against Berea Mid Park. Uh, I would think most people before the season started would have said uh, Berea Mid Park, Midview, and Avon would have been the top teams in the SWC. And so far, it's playing out that way. Uh, this should be an outstanding high school football game. You wonder for Midview how difficult it's going to be to go back to back with such uh, strong opponents like Avon and Berea Mid Park. But so far, the Middies have answered the bell all season long. And for Firelands, uh, the team you alluded to, 3-1, uh, and one, they go over to Oberlin, taking on a Phoenix team that certainly has struggled this year. So you would think the Falcons would be the favorite in that one. Uh, they could go to 4-1 and one on the campaign. And, Bruce, it's interesting, as we sit here with this week being the halfway point of the season, Friday night being week 5, 12 of the 16 teams that are in Lorain County are at 500 or above. We've got the two unbeaten teams uh, with Columbia and Midview. Uh, you've got a couple of teams that are at 3-1, and one, and you've got a few teams that are at 2-2. Two and two. So when 75% of the teams in Lorain County are at 500 or above, uh, that means we're seeing some pretty good football through the first half of the year. So, you know, as we're coming up to that halfway point, who do you see at the end still? Are, are you looking at a team yet? Wow. Well, obviously, uh, Midview and Avon. The uh, easy ones, uh, yeah. By the way, I don't have any shirt or any hat this week. Or, you or, know. or made up team names <laughs> or anything like that. Yeah, we'll just go with the basic blue shirt this week. But uh, Midview and Avon certainly stand out. Uh, Columbia, who will have this Friday on WEOL. Uh, Jason Ward does a phenomenal job at Columbia High School. They're 4-0, taking on a very good Black River team this week. Black River at 3-1 and one on the season. So I would think Columbia certainly in the mix as far as a, a playoff position would be concerned. Uh, Illyria Catholic at 3-1, and one, uh, having moved into that new conference with the likes of Rocky River and Bay and the three Parma schools. So I would think EC uh, would certainly feel as though they're on track to be a playoff team. Uh, the aforementioned Firelands. Uh, I think this week the first playoff rankings came out to computer points. Falcons were sitting at number six in their region. So I would think uh, they're starting to peak at those points a little bit. So, yeah, we've got a lot of football still to be played, uh, six more weeks starting on Friday night. But you can see where some of that positioning is now starting to take place as far as uh, postseason hopes are concerned. Okay, very good. Um, hey, by the way, I did uh, actually get to eat at Corks and Stubbies last week because we haven't done our official Corks and Stubbies very subtly. <laughs> 
shoehorned in plug, so uh, uh, why don't you why don't you take that? Well, again, we are here at Corks and Stubbies. Uh, it's always fun to sit in and uh, just uh, in enjoy the atmosphere here at Corks and Stubbies. And one of the things that uh, we've had the pleasure of doing the first few weeks that we've been here, uh, shooting the show in the afternoon when we do, uh, so far the weather has cooperated. It's really cool on your lunch hour to sit outside. They've got a beautiful patio area, uh, sits right outside here in downtown Amherst on the five corners. So uh, whether it's dinner or after a game or if it's lunchtime, you want to sit outside corks and stubbies it's a great place to be and uh, we love being here every week now, now what'd you eat bruce I, a, a really good size uh, cheeseburger the thing, <laughs> the thing was delicious i'm stunned yeah i'm delicious. absolutely flabbergasted oh, I, yeah, I, I was considering that bruce this, had the big cheeseburger i was thinking salad but <laughs> somehow i just felt called to the cheeseburger <laughs> all right tim Give me a wild card here. We don't have one last topic, so I'm going to give me something. Well, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the games we have this week on WEOL and there on our go. website, WEOL.com. I mentioned uh, we've got Black River at Columbia on the radio side on WEOL this week. Black River 3-1, and one, always a very tough physical football team under Al Young. Uh, they'll go over to Columbia, and they'll give the Raiders a very good ball game. So we're looking forward to having this one on the radio on Friday night on WEOL.com Stream 2. North Ridgeville and uh, Demario McCall will be home on Friday night. They'll be entertaining Avon Lake. The Shoremen appear to have turned things around a little bit, got off to that tough 0-2 start, but they've won two straight. So it's 2-2 two two Avon Lake at 3-1 North Ridgeville. That should be a very good ball game. And then our Medina County matchup, uh, Stream 3 on WEOL.com on Friday night. Uh, it'll feature a Lorraine County team, Clearview, taking, out a t taking on a team out of Medina County in Buckeye, who is just having a fabulous first half of the season. The Buckeye Bucks at 4-0, so Clearview will have their hands full. But a very, very busy Friday night for us on WEOL and on the website, WEOL.com. And, Bruce, it's hard to believe we're at the halfway point of the season already once Friday night is concluded. So uh, it'll be a fun stretch run. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how fast that season goes. Would you like it to is. see it a couple of weeks longer? Pardon me? Would you like to see that season stretched out a couple weeks oh, longer? Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I'll, I'll share something with our viewers here. Uh, I've had a few coaches tell me, I won't name them by name, but I've had a few tell me this Midview team is for real. They could be playing very deep uh, into the month of November. So uh, not to put any more pressure on that Midview team or put right. the onus on them, but when other coaches start saying, boy, we haven't seen a team this good in a long, long time. They could go a long way. Uh, that just shows you how special this club is. So uh, not that we're rooting for Midview. We're rooting against the teams that they are playing. But I'll tell you what, if you haven't had a chance to go out and watch this Midview team perform, uh, spend a few dollars and uh, enjoy a Friday night football watching the Middies. They're a very special group. We're going to end up freezing again at the end of this <laughs> year, aren't we? Well, you're on the field. You know, I'm in a press box. It's a little bit warmer in there. Oh, you radio people. <laughs> All right, Tim, hey, thanks a lot. Uh, another great week, and I appreciate you being here. Always great to be here at uh, Corks and Stubbies in Amherst, right in the five corners in Amherst. It's great to be here, and uh, look forward to uh, coming back here again next week.